Hello everyone. So I am going to talk today about one of the most controversial topics that there is in our society today that I will probably ever cover and a topic that most pastors will not dare to touch is the topic of homosexuality. God has given me a prophecy about the future through a dream and confirmed it through another dream the next day or the next night rather and through something else which I'll explain later on another confirmation so and when you have a dream when you're a dreamer when you have that that gift that you dream and then they come to pass you write them down they come to pass like Joseph you know you just know when something's from the Lord like you know that you know so I'm going to share this dream. First, a disclaimer. I love homosexuals. A hundred percent. I love all people. And if you don't love all people, and if you have any hatred in your heart, then you need to check yourself with God because the fact is that God loves all people and he loved us enough to die for us while we were yet sinners. So he loves homosexuals even in their sin. However, just like any sin, homosexuality, you know, it, it will bring you to hell, to an eternal separation from God. Homosexuality is a sin that is just as bad as two heterosexual people having sex outside of marriage. It is just as bad as somebody watching porn. And one thing I will say, the church has gone about um, ministering to the LGBTQIA community extremely backwards, not the way of Christ, not the way that Jesus would want us to. We need to speak the truth in love. We need to speak the truth in gentleness. We need to build relationships with people. And as adults, Christians or non-Christians, we need to agree to disagree, be mature enough to agree to disagree and love each other despite our differences, despite whether we're Republican, whether we're Democrat, whether we're Christian, whether we're Muslim, right? We need to, whether we believe homosexuality is a sin or not, we need to love one another, period. And we need to respect one another, okay? Just because we disagree doesn't mean that we can't have a relationship, right? A friendship. Now, um... Yeah, I just wanted to, to say that disclaimer and just say that if you are LGBTQ, God loves you. And there are people in the church who will love on you. They will not judge you. I know that the church has done a lot of harm, um, but there are good people in the church and people that are willing to pray for you, pray with you, help you. Uh, um, and God wants to answer all your doubts, your questions. You know, for those that, that, you know, you're like, hey, but like, I don't know, like, I was just born this way. Remember that Jesus says that in order to get to heaven, we need to be born again. All of us need to be born again. Right? So, we're all born <laughs> with the tendency to lie. Children, you don't have to teach them how to lie, how to be selfish, none of that. We're all born with the tendency to be, you know, for ourselves, out for ourselves, right? You know, steal cookie from the cookie jar. You don't teach a child how to do that, but you gotta teach them how to share, how to do all these things and be good, right? Because we have that sinful nature. So we gotta be born again. And, um, and God understands how hard it is for you. So I'm gonna get into the dream. And um, yeah, so. I dreamt that my friend and I were in a courtroom filled with Christians and some non-Christians. And I was presenting the case that Jesus did in fact speak about homosexual, homosexuality and transgenderism in the Bible. Okay, just to pause right there on my dream. If you go back a few years ago, uh, Pastor Carl Lentz who was the pastor of Hillsong United, New York City, 
Um, he, in an interview, said, you know, when they asked him about homosexuality being a sin or not, he said that Jesus never talked about it. It's not true. Jesus definitely talked about it. The New Testament covers it. The Old Testament covers it. So, um, here in this dream, I was presenting the case that Jesus did, in fact, uh, speak about homosexuality and transgenderism in the in the Bible. And it seemed at this time in the dream that people were saying that that was not true, and that was the the most popular belief that Jesus never spoke about. It was never mentioned in the Bible. A woman stood up from what looked like to be a jury stand. She was blonde and most likely in her 30s. She was very upset at me and began to argue that homosexuality and transgenderism are never mentioned in scripture. I remember the verses by heart. That's something that God, I don't know, verses come to me with different situations, they just come. So I remember the verses by heart in my, in my dream, but I didn't know where exactly they were in the Bible, which is true in real life. I got to get better at that. I had a laptop in front of me and I began to Google the verses, but the website would redirect me or present glitches. The computer would present glitches. Finally, when it did let me search it, there were no results. It was like it never existed, right? Like, like they never were in the Bible. And I began to even question myself. I was like, am I crazy? Like, did, was this actually in the Bible or was this in my head? My friend Diane next to me remembered the chapter in the verse where it spoke about homosexuality, the one that I was thinking of. And I went to it in my Bible, but it was gone. Like, it was like verse 17. I remember the verse 17. I don't know why that number, maybe it was just random. But it was gone. Like, there was nothing written there in that space. Um, when I when I woke up, I asked God to give me confirmation if I should share it on YouTube. Because I was feeling it press on my heart. God, like, show me. And then Dan, I told my friend Dan, and Dan reminded me a few years ago, her little sister, who was seven at the time, very prophetic, said this and said um, that they're going to take the Bible verses about homosexuality and transgenderism out of the Bible. And she's seven years old. She just came out out of nowhere and said that. We weren't even talking about it, nothing. Very prophetic. And she's said things and they've come to pass. This little girl is like, God has something special on her life because she, she has a wisdom that's beyond her years and it's amazing. But she reminded me of that. I'm like, oh my gosh, I remember. She said that. And so I had another dream the next night. And in the, ne in the second dream, it was like the first one. But the difference was that I looked in, I looked, okay, so the, yes, so the difference in the second dream was this whole court thing happened but I looked in the Bible to find the verse one day and told me and they were whited out. Like, you know, the white out, like the little, like, um, kind of like liquid. It was whited out, but you could tell somebody whited it out and they did a horrible job. It was messy. You could tell. So I'm going to share the verses of the Bible in the Old Testament and the New Testament of homosexuality and uh, transgenderism. So Leviticus 18.22, do not have sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman. That is detestable. Leviticus 20.13, if a man practices homosexuality, having sex with another man as with a woman, both men have committed a detestable act. They must both be put to death for they are guilty of a capital offense. So that's the Old Testament. So when people put in the New Testament, New Covenant, we do not put people to death for that, okay? Um, you gotta understand the context. So you have to understand the context of the Old Testament so you don't see this as like, oh my gosh, like, you know, what is this? You gotta read the Old Testament. New Testament, in the, in the say, in the same way that men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another, men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their error. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 11. 
1 Timothy 1, 8 through 11, or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of your God. 1 Timothy 1, 8 through 11. And then you can look at Mark 10, 5 through 9, and that'll give you another verse. Um, we cannot pick and choose what we want from the Bible. The Bible, it's either all true or it's not. We, you know, it's not a buffet. We can't say, okay, God, like, we, I agree with you on this, 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 and that, but I don't agree with that, so I'm not going to practice that. You know, when you surrender your life to Jesus, it's all. It's everything. You trust him. You trust that what he says is true. And you can come to him and you can be honest with God if you are dealing with uh, homosexuality or bisexuality or anything like that, transgenderism. You can say, God, please, like, help me. I, I don't want to stop this lifestyle. And if it is a, something that's going to bring me to, to, to hell, please change me because I don't want to change, right? Be honest with the Lord. But it is the fear of the Lord that makes a man depart from evil. And fear as in, like, I reverence you, like I I respect you like a father, like I'm not gonna do this because I'm gonna get punished by my dad. And God doesn't want that for you. God, Jesus actually took the punishment for your sin on the cross. So you would not have to go to hell. Um, even though he was innocent, he suffered more than anybody else. Um, he understands and he loves you right where you are, but you have to repent. You have to turn away from your sin and have a relationship with Jesus. Really trust in him, put your trust in him, believe in him to be saved. You don't know the day of your death. Um, and I forgot to mention this last one about transgenderism, this Bible verse in, in the Bible for transgenderism. Deuteronomy 22, five, there shall not be an article, which is a garment of a man upon a woman and a man shall not put on a wrapper of a woman because everyone doing these things is an abomination to the Lord your to the Lord your God excuse me so there's many verses that talk about it I think there's more than one about that one um, you need to tell somebody the truth if you love them and I love you whoever you are and if you need help you can message me I would love to pray for you I know that I'm probably going to get some hate from this video, but we're not here to please man. We're here to please God. And the fear of man is a snare. But the fear of the Lord is wisdom. It's life. So um, that was all I had to say. And uh, just remember that God loves you wherever you are right now. And he will help you get through anything that you're struggling with. All right, guys, be blessed.